Welcome to episode 1 of Uterine Fibroids. In this episode, we are going to look at definition of uterine fibroids, causes and risk factors of uterine fibroids. We are going to look into details, classification of uterine fibroids and their locations. And finally, we are going to look at typical signs and symptoms geared towards uterine fibroids. In the next episode, we are going to look at diagnosis of uterine fibroids and also how we can manage uterine fibroids. Otherwise, if you are new in this channel, click this notification bell, written subscribe, turn it on for the new videos that we will post frequently. Uterine fibroids are benign smooth muscle tumors that normally grows inside the uterus or in the surface of the uterus or outside the uterus or even in the muscles of the uterus. And normally they are benign, meaning they are not cancer causing. And these uterine fibroids normally uh, shrink or even disappear with menopause. When progesterone and estrogen play a significant role in the development of this particular uterine fibroid. And that's why uterine fibroids normally shrink or disappear with menopause. And did you know that uterine fibroid can grow as big as pumpkins? And this one we call giant uterine fibroids. That is the size of pumpkins. And sometimes you can extract a very, very big uterine fibroid in the size of about 40 kilograms plus and even the one that was excised and removed via postmortem was almost 140 kilograms and some were also removed and documented were almost 63.3 kilograms so we must take this uh, uterine fibroids very very serious particularly uh, in terms of uh, signs and symptoms that we are going to discuss into details Uterine fibroids has no clear cause and this is why we do not have a very definitive cause of uterine fibroids. Scientists are working day and night to evaluate what might cause uterine fibro. But it is postulated that there are some risk factors that are tethered towards the existence of uterine fibroids. And number one in this is obesity. Those who have uh, BMI greater than 30, those who are obese have a lot of fat cells in their system and these fat cells are very responsible for development and production of estrogen and estrogen plays a very very significant significant role in developing and development of uterine fibroids. Another cause or another risk factor is uh, tied towards genetics. It is inherited. It is postulated that if your mother had uterine fibroid, then you as the daughter, you have a risk factor times threefold of you developing uterine fibroids. And it is also documented that it is very, very prominent in black people or black women than white women. In fact, the higher the risk factor in white in black women is around three to nine times developing of uterine fibroids. Diet is also playing a very, very significant role as a risk factor. In fact, those who are lacking vitamin D in their diet or vitamin D deficiency is prone to develop, they are prone to develop uh, what we call uterine fibroid. Even those who are using using processed food, those who are using uh, red meat, they are prone to develop uterine Fibroid. Now, let's look at locations and classifications of uterine fibroids. Uh, we must know that uh, this particular uterine fibroids can affect the uh, uterus itself, it can affect the muscles around the uterus, or it can affect intramuscular part of the uterus, or it can affect outside uterus or even towards the cervical area of the female reproductive system. So in classification, we are going to look at four major classification and location of this particular uterine fibroids. Now, the number one uh, location that is most common is called intramural fibroids, uh, which normally uh, is located in the muscle walls of the uterus. And majorly, it is normally asymptomatic when small in size, but 
when it grows, it becomes a symptomatic event causing pressure signs and symptoms that we'll look about. Now, it begins with a small nodule uh, at the uterine muscles and this may expand inwards causing distortion and elongation of uterine cavity. Then we have another one that is called subserosol which is located at the surface of the uterus or sometimes even outside of the uterine wall and may grow outwards and sometimes it might form a narrow stem and this one uh, we normally term as pedunculated uh, uterine fibroids. And we also have what we call submucosal fibroids and uh, this is this is located in the muscle beneath the endometrium and sometimes mid muscle of the endometrial layer of the uterus and sometimes this one grows and distorts the uterine cavity and it is the one which is very very prone to bleeding and causing infertility and sometimes it can also be pedant plated and lastly in terms of location we have the cervical fibroids which is uh, which are located at the wall of the cervix and in this particular location and the, in, in terms of growth of these uterine fibroids they can result into hemorrhage they can necrose they can calcify and even uh, be having some cystic changes signs and symptoms of uterine fibroids are very key and mostly uh, they are asymptomatic mostly uterine fibroids are asymptomatic but you will find that most of them particularly uh, cause pressure signs and symptoms and when they grow they result into pain which might affect this particular patient and there is dysmenorrhea that is painful menses menses can even be heavy there can be intramenstrual uh, bleeding and sometimes can be even spotting patient can also present with dyspareunia that is painful uh, coitus or pain during sex particularly when the uh, pedunculated uterine fibro grows towards the vaginal area and sometimes this one can also uh, distort the abdomen and abdomen can be very very distended and you might think that a female is uh, pregnant and uh, the pressure symptoms can also result in increased urination and uh, we find that also three percent of those who have uterine fibroids normally develop in fertility it can also affect pregnancy and these are the things that somebody or a woman can present with when she is pregnant and having uterine fibroids one it can lead to miscarriage it can lead to prolonged bleeding during pregnancy and it can also bring what we call premature labor and also can distort even the position of the child intrauterine so we take note into that and uh, signs and symptoms normally worsen as the uterine fibroids grows in fact it is more worse when the uterine fibroid is very very big as i've told you earlier at the beginning there are some that has been weighing even 45.5 kilograms uh, and one that we all know, talked about earlier also about weighing about 63.3 kilograms that was removed in a woman during post mortem if you like this channel please click the notification return subscribe turn it on for more videos that we post Muchas.